I'm Kevin. Welcome to my cave. I'm working on some videos exploring analog music synthesis, and in the next one I'm starting to need to use BJTs, bipolar junction transistors, in ways that a beginner probably hasn't seen. I realized that I should do a few short videos on how transistors work, starting from the very beginning. So let's get started. In this video, I just want to take a quick look on what a transistor looks like when it isn't in a circuit. A BJT consists of a tiny chip of semiconductor that is essentially two diodes connected in opposite directions. It's either got a bit of p-type material, sandwiched between two bits of n-type material, in which case it's called, imaginatively enough, an NPN transistor. Or else the other way around, a bit of n sandwiched between two bits of p called a PNP. The three terminals of the device are named the emitter, the base, and the collector. The schematic symbol for the device looks like this for the NPN, and this for the PNP. If we deal with only two terminals at a time, the PN functions look like diodes. The arrow identifies the emitter. It points the same way that the arrow of the diode symbol points, away from the base for an NPN, and toward the base for a PNP. The flat bit is the base, and the diagonal bit without the arrow is the collector. Out of circuit, you can tell the emitter and collector apart because the collector diode is mechanically bigger, which means that it can allow more current to flow, which makes its forward voltage drop lower. When all three terminals are in play, the story is very different, but I'm not going there yet. Here on the breadboard, I've got a little six pin device that I know is just a pair of transistors on the inside. I could search for the part number on the internet, but let me see if we can identify the pinout and just what sort of transistors we have, just by measuring it. I have my multimeter on the diode setting, so that when I have the leads connected to a diode in the forward direction, it'll beep and read out the forward voltage drop. Let's test all the pairs in both directions. found a diode already. There's another one.
With diodes connected like this, it looks like a pair of PNPs, and the larger voltage drops on pins 5 and 6 tell us that those leads are the emitters. Let's call up the datasheet to see if I have it right. The pinout that I drew seems to match what's shown. One thing that I notice is that the base emitter voltages are very well matched. They differ by only 400 microvolts. That will turn out to be important a few videos from now, when I discuss differential pairs. So now we know how to identify an unknown BJT's type, and find out which lead is which. Next time, I'll start putting one in a circuit. Until then, stay tuned, stay safe, stay healthy, stay curious, and take care of one another. Bye!